Hey YouTube, it's Penny. I'm recording this on Wednesday, September 13th. Uh, actually, I've been wanting to record this for um, several days now, but I have a new computer and a new software program, so this is the, I've been having to teach myself how to use this, so hopefully I can get it right. Um, so, David and I have been through the ringer uh, the last couple of weeks, and um, I wanted to share our story with you, um, hopefully as an encouragement. Um, but also just let you know kind of what's been going on in my life. Um, so to back up a little bit, um, I stepped down as operations manager of Sphere Publishing Group uh, at the end of June and um, with the intention of being able to have more time to go back and uh, finish my ebook and start recording videos again. So um, there's been a lot going on. In that time, our daughter got engaged and she's getting married on October 1st in Juneau, so we've got that coming up in a couple of weeks. And uh, a few, well, starting in, I think it was sometime in August, I think August 11th, uh, a wildfire started to burn uh, near the community where we live in Montana. And uh, I had a, a trip scheduled over to the Seattle area with David and thought, well, okay, I think it's okay, I'll go ahead and go. and. Um, and then we came to my parents' cabin in Washington uh, with the intention of spending Labor Day weekend with them. And our, you know, house sitter and the folks who were back in the community let us know that our uh, neighborhood was being put on pre-evacuation status for this wildfire. So we prayed about it and felt like we needed to, to go to Montana to our home there and kind of batten down the hatches. Well, we left on uh, Saturday. Um, my car needed a new battery, couldn't hold the charge, so we got delayed um, for several hours while we had to go get that taken care of. So by the time we rolled into the community, uh, it was about five o'clock on September 2nd, which is interesting because the Father has shown me so many significant things happening on weddings and birthdays and stuff like that. And I've mentioned in previous videos that September 2nd is the date that my parents got married. Um, it's the date that um, I was married to my first husband back when I was 20. And uh, it was also his birthday. So September 2nd, I always like wonder, well, so it was a significant day for us this year. Um, so I'm going to take you through a, a series of photographs and, uh, and then I'll come back with a, a summary. So I'm going to try to um, narrate these photos for you. So I took this shot, uh, this is my car and this is David ahead of me as we're driving into our neighborhood, um, which it's, you know, it's basically in the forest for miles and miles. And then you get up to our place and it kind of opens up and this is what, what we can see. So, you know, at this point we didn't really know what we're dealing with. You could see that there's um, a pretty ominous sky um, going and you can see the wind is blowing, but um, we we didn't realize how bad the fire was at this point. And there was a community meeting scheduled for six o'clock. It was actually a fundraiser for the a volunteer fire department, which is located pretty much right over in here. You can't. Oh no, it's right here. You can see it. Um, Kitty corner from our property. So you know we got cleaned up and got ready to head down to the meeting. Well, we got halfway there and we got turned back by a sheriff. Who said meeting's been canceled you know we're evacuating you guys need to go home and you know get your start packing up so so that's what we did we get back to our house and um by the way so we live you know there's a lot of amish folks in our community and before we got there um our next door neighbor who he hays the field behind our house as well as you know his field out here he had said, you know, hey, you know, David and, and Penny have big pasture. We've got you know, paddocks and stuff. This is actually our garden, um, you know, where people could come and, and bring their animals. And so we showed up and we had, I think, 36 or 37 animals that were um, on our property that had just been dropped off there. So we start packing up um, and, you know, I mean, it's one of those things like we, at this point, we, we're still not getting it. We're not understanding um, the imminent danger, um, but we are understanding like, okay, this is an emergency and you don't have a lot of time. So you need to get your valuables, your irreplaceables, you know, your family photos, that kind of stuff 
together and get them packed up. So David went and hooked up our cargo trailer, got it from the barn, and, and we started doing that. Um, we called uh, one of our employees in Eureka and asked him if he would come out and pack up the spheres, the Bibles, because, you know, we didn't have time to do it. <clears throat> and uh, he actually showed up with, um, he brought four vehicles out um, and they completely packed up the all of the books so we could concentrate on our, our personal belongings. Um, uh, so this next picture, I, I took it, I think around seven o'clock and it, it was the first time I went, oh no, like you can see the flames. <laughs> So it's not just smoke at this point now, we're actually seeing fire. Um, and here you can see, I mean, this is kind of a good indication of why people felt like it was safe to bring their animals to our property, because we do have water rights and we had been irrigating all summer long, uh, the pasture out behind our house. So this, this photograph was taken probably, I don't know, eight or 8.30, um, and things are getting pretty dire at this point. Um, and then this, is like around nine o'clock um and this photo was taken this was taken by somebody i don't even know I, I grabbed it off of the internet it was taken um from across lake kukunusa looking back um at, at the fire so at this point you know it's like nine o'clock at night we're exhausted we've been you know pedal to the metal for three hours it, it was like 90 plus degree heat um sweaty um up up until that point, I was having a hard time focusing, <laughs> as you can imagine. Never been through this kind of fire drill before. And uh, my prayers sounded a lot like what I would call begging. You know, please, Lord, please, 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 um, please put out the fire. Please send rain. Please have the wind change. Please, whatever. And, um, and then I hear this still small voice in my ear say, all power and authority have I given unto you. I thought, okay, I guess it's time for me to start practicing what I preach and uh, put into action the things that I've been learning the last, you know, five years or so. So I stopped what I was doing. I walked up to the corner of our property. I put my hands up in the air, basically against the fire, and I commanded the fire to turn around and go the other direction. And I was using my prayer language, every weapon in my arsenal that I had. I commanded the wind to change and to, to blow that fire away from our community. And, and I basically, I drew in my mind, um, in our community, I drew imaginary line in the sand. And I said, you shall not pass. And I meant it. <laughs> it was like, I'd had enough at that point. And, um, and and then I was like, okay. And then I went back in the house and I, I continued to, to pack. We were waiting for, we actually, I think at that point, the search and rescue people had come and said, you know, you're leaving, right? And my husband said, we're packing up. <laughs> um, and so, you know, we continued, but the, at, at, there was a change. There was a change. And I am not taking credit for single-handedly saving, <laughs> you know, the community. But I will say that there was a change not only in the fire, because it did, it did. The winds stopped and went the other direction, and it stopped coming into our, um, into our community, uh, towards us. And there was a change in me. Um, I went back in the house, and instead of begging and pleading, I was now praising, and I was singing praise songs. And um, the song that kept going over and over in my head, <clears throat> and actually has continued this past week, is that. Um, the song um, in the in the eye of the storm, you remain in control. Um, and uh, anyway, so I just I just kept praising the Father and and thanking Him. Um, so it was a huge faith lesson for me. By ten o'clock or so, um, one of our neighbors came over to let us know that he um, and uh, and the gentleman who owns the boys' home next door. Uh, and one of their employees were staying and they, you know, sent the, the women and the children and all the boys from the home gone. And we found out later that there were lots of other folks who had also stayed um, to defend their properties. Um, a lot of the Amish men stayed um, behind and uh, we just started having like this sense of peace. Um, so 
in addition to the fact that the fire, let me, um, I'll show you another couple of pictures here, but um, the fire basically was receding instead of advancing at that point. And the fact that we had so many animals that had been left on our property, we kind of felt like a bit of a refugee center for animals um, that we didn't feel like um, there was imminent danger. And so we decided that we would just wait it out. Um, and I had actually called into town to ask if there were any hotel rooms left available and there was nothing. So basically at that point, our choices were if, if we didn't stay, then we needed to um, go to, a, 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 what are they called? Like a Red Cross um, evacuation center and sleep on the floor or a mat or whatever, um, or drive a couple of hours down to some friends of ours um, in Columbia Falls who said that we could come and stay there and basically stay in a camper with our two dogs and everything. So we thought, all right, we're just gonna, we're gonna wait this out. And so it was a very sleepless night, as you can imagine, getting up and looking and checking all night long, all night long to see if the fire was in fact, you know, staying where it was. Um, and it, and it did. So um, I'm gonna take you through a couple of more photographs now. So the night of the fire, September 2nd, um, a total of 10 families lost their homes in our community, including this one that belonged to um, some folks that we know, uh, an Amish family. So uh, the devastation was very real. Uh, the danger was definitely imminent and uh, very, very sad um, what happened. Uh, this is the morning after. Uh, this is, so this is our property out back and you can see the animals um, had been brought to us um, that we then felt responsible for feeding and watering. And because we have um, alfalfa out here, uh, something that can happen to um, animals is they can overeat. Uh, and, and that actually did happen to one of the calves, unfortunately. Um, and we ended up losing that calf. But um, so. <laughs> You, this is our patio furniture. So basically the night before, you know, we had people stop by, you know, can, is there anything we can do? How can we help? And some of the folks that our employee brought and, you know, one of the things you're supposed to do is get everything off of your, off your patios or your, uh, or your porches, whatever. So that, um, so we just hauled everything out to the middle of the, um, of the yard. So here are some more animals out. So this is back, this is our house here in our barn. <clears throat> um, and this is the, the calf we ended up losing um, to, to bloat from overeating the alfalfa. Very sad. Um, and so th this is uh, the, uh, on September 3rd, the next day, um, we had a Chinook helicopter that was flying back and forth, back and forth all day over our house in addition to some helicopters and I didn't get a picture of the DC-10, so we finally got the big guns, um, a lot of air support. Unfortunately, it was after, you know, we'd lost all these homes um, that we ended up finally getting the resources that we needed uh, to fight the fire. Um, this was the following morning, I believe. So basically what happened is the smoke descended on us like a wet blanket um, to the point that we couldn't, you couldn't go outside without a respirator on. Um, it was just, it was toxic. Um, these, I felt really badly for these animals. Um, but all in all, they, they fared pretty well. So this was taken on the 5th, so several days after, and I wish I'd known about this um, this internet, this website sooner, but I wanted to give you basically a scope of where we are. So the picture that I took where we were first coming into the neighborhood is up this road. Um, it was taken about right here. And then our property is right here, so this, area is our property. So you can see how massive this fire is. Um, these yellow spots represent um, hot spots within the last 12 hours. So this was, like I said, on the 5th. Um, and then these represent, um, the, you know, orange and then red and then whatever this brown color is <clears throat> are, are older. But we actually have a, a friend who owns a home right here and the fire actually came up burnt some of the steps, but there were sprinklers going, and so um, where the sprinklers were going, the, the, the property was saved, so uh, uh, just amazing. So there's just a couple of, this is the 5th, this is the 6th, 
this is the seventh, so you can see that you know it continues to flare, and then this is the eighth. I think this is the last one that I have. So we were in Montana under you know mandatory evacuation order, <laughs> um, staying in our home, uh, taking care of those animals for a full week, and then we had to make a decision uh, about when to leave because uh, David had a, a very important business trip this week in Vancouver, British Columbia. So, and my, my father got some, some bad news about my uncle um, being diagnosed with late stage pancreatic cancer. Um, and my, my dad's actually dealing with his own health issue right now. And um, so David and I ended up leaving uh, this past weekend, um, coming back over to the girls about where my parents' cabin is. And, um, and then David went on to um, Seattle and then Vancouver. So uh, I'm, I'm here and because I've got uh, the dogs with me and my mom's allergic, um, I'm so grateful to one of their neighbors who have opened up their cabin to us. And um, so we have a, a place to stay. Now, the interesting thing is that the mandatory evacuation order was, um, I don't know what you would call it. They went back to pre-evacuation status. Um, and so now members of the community have been allowed back in. Um, but of course, if something changes, they'll have to leave uh, again. So, um, and it was it was great that they were allowed back in, especially the the Amish families who, I mean, their gardens. This is this is harvest and canning season, and their families live off of you know their produce pretty much the rest of the year. They have huge families and everything. So, so I'm um, I'm staying here. My plan is to to go back um, on Monday. That's the weather guessers, as I call them, the forecasters, are um, forecasting for some rain um, to come in uh, to the community. The first time we've had rain in months. Um, so uh, that's my plan, and I'm so grateful for the the neighbors who are looking out for our, our property and taking care of the animals um, in our absence. So uh, all of that to say, I am um, hoping to get back into making videos again. Um, I feel the fathers call me back into it. I've actually stepped down um, from being the operations manager. Uh, I think I mentioned that earlier. <laughs> Sorry, it's taking forever to record this because um, I don't know what I'm doing. So all of that to say, I'm hoping to finish my ebook or at least part two um, soon and uh, get back in the saddle. We are coming into the, the high holy days. Um, there's been a lot going on, uh, fire and water, and I, and I have a video called I think water and fire and then sister Barbara and brother Dan got Taylor seven recently did a video called fire and water. Um, so father's been warning us for a long time. This is coming. And, you know, I have to admit that, <clears throat> you know, all along I've been like, you know, bring it on, bring it on. Let's do it. Cause we know we got to get through all this bad stuff before the king comes back. <laughs> so bring it. <sighs> and then when it, when you actually go through it, when it affects you, like it's affecting, you know, people in, in Florida on the coast, uh, people in the, the Gulf Coast, um, my attitude changed. <laughs> you know? It's like, okay, Father, we know that we have to go through trials and tribulations, um, and it's part of our purification process, but it ain't fun. <laughs> this, is, this is not fun, and I keep feeling like it's going to get a whole lot worse. I know it's going to get a whole lot worse before it gets better, and I, I hope I passed this test. I, I know that I was failing it initially <laughs> because when I first saw the, the flames, I mean, my heart kind of failed for a moment um, and uh, my faith faltered. And, you know, so in the midst of the storm, you have to remember that he is there. He hasn't left you. Um, and I mean, what's the worst thing that could happen for a believer? It's not that we would lose our home. It's not that we would lose our life. Um, it's the worst thing that could happen is that we would lose our faith, that we'd be part of the falling away, the apostasia the, that, that comes before Messiah. So, because if we lose our life, you know, absent from the body, present with the Lord, uh, there, there's, there's no downside with the exception of losing your faith. Um, so keep the faith regardless of the floods the fires, the famine, the plagues, the, all the stuff that's coming. Um, don't lose your faith. Baruch Adonai, Elohim Malak Ka'olam, 
Blessed are you, our Lord God, King of